Morning everybody, a very warm welcome back to MechTech and today we are out on the driver and we are trying to solve the clonking from this front suspension on the cab. Now, it, it's still doing it, it's got a lot worse. I have been under there again with Mrs. MechTech moving the cab backwards and forwards and full lock and I'm pretty sure my original diagnosis was correct of the upper control arm bushes gone. So, we have got some new ones to put in, they are upgraded as well, they are poly bushes so hopefully that will make them last a bit longer. So let's get this thing jacked up and get the wheels off and see what we're working with and try and get this sorted out because it's driving me nuts now. <laughs> Let's crack on. Right, having got this jacked up, hope you're gonna be able to see this on camera. But these are, yeah, you, know, you can see, you saw it there move. See the move in that? That is definitely 100% my clonking. That one there. Hopefully, you can see that. So, we are on the right track. Let's get these wheels off and we'll see what we can do. In case you couldn't see it before, I've got the wheel off now, look, watch this. So, here you go. 100%. That is my clonking. <laughs> so I think we're on to a winner now. Under here, you can see, it's basically one ball joint, which is there, and bolts under here and one massive long bolt which runs through the top arm now from previous experience that can be a bit troublesome to get out but hopefully we'll be able to do it all right so first thing we're going to do is get this front ball joint undone pop that out and then we can get the back out let's crack on right got the ball joint off as you can see and you can see really easily now how loose that is so my initial diagnosis was correct which I'm kind of pleased about and at the same time a bit miffed I didn't do something about it sooner because I was pretty sure that's what it was but anyway at least we're doing it now that's the main thing so next job is going to be to get this long bolt out through the middle here now undoing it is not a problem because obviously you can get to both ends knocking it through sometimes can be a bit of a problem because it does turn to rust inside these bushes a little bit so that is going to be the hardest bit I think if anything having said that the ball joint came undone no problem at all so fingers crossed because this cab's a bit newer than my old one, I did these on my old one as well. Because this is a bit newer, hopefully they'll come undone a little bit easier. So I'm going to get this undone and I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, to say that I'm surprised is the understatement of the year. Look at that. Bolt, you come out totally clean. I mean, the, bu the bushes are absolutely annihilated as you can see. I'm hoping it hasn't damaged this bolt. It doesn't look like it has, so that's good. Um, as you can see on the control arm this is all the remnants of the, bear, uh, the bushes that are left um, they're not in the greatest of health as you can see um, in fact half of that one has completely come out already um, yeah, actually that's the bit that's still on the bolt looking at it so yeah they uh, were definitely um, suspension bushes a bit too long <laughs> if I'm allowed to quote uh, my mates, or not my mates, but people that salvage rebuilds that I uh, watch on YouTube. Um, they, that's what they say on there. They say they've been a, been a bush a bit too long. So, in fact, that one you can see there is completely egg-shaped. It's not even round anymore. So, it's definitely at it. <laughs> um, just lucky, by the looks of it, that it hasn't damaged its arm too much. So if I'd left it any longer, I think it probably would have done, to be honest with you. So I'm going to get these all cleaned up. Maybe run a wire brush through these. Make sure that they're all got no gunk in them or anything like that. There is remnants of old bush in there by the looks of it that I need to clean out. And then we can get the new poly bushes in, which should just be... Well, these ones actually came out really easy. The other ones, when I did them on my old cab, I had to actually burn them out because they were in there so bad that uh, they wouldn't come out. These ones just popped out. 
so they are actually out already so I'm gonna give it a real nice clean up and we can get the new ones in and hopefully this shouldn't take too long of any luck <laughs> famous last words I know but there we go let's carry on right giving this suspension a bit of a clean up as you can see I've just run a file through these uh, apertures so that they're all sort of smooth and they should be good to go I'd say there's a couple of bits in that one I've missed actually I might have to go and sort that out in a minute um, just like flaky bits of rust in there where the old bushes I don't think met in the middle all the way or if they did they weren't touching for whatever reason um, it's left some sort of uh, bits of rust in here and there but I don't want to go too mad at it because obviously I don't want to make it so it's not round pretty in there that stuff whatever's left in there I think we're gonna go with that so as you can see that's the new kit nice uh, bright shade of orange <laughs> um, get that here. there we go that is what we've got we have one of those on each side of this pushes in there like that easy as anything and You've got the collar which goes through the middle, which you'll see is your middle part of your bush effectively. And that pushes down the middle of there. And that is all there is to it. I'm going to put a little bit of grease inside here. Now I know I should probably be using silicon grease or whatever else. I haven't got any of that unfortunately, so I'm just going to have to put a little bit of normal grease in there just to stop them squeaking more than anything else. Um, so it's as simple as that. Um, kind of wish I'd done this job sooner now because if, if I don't know it was going to come off this easy, <laughs> I wouldn't have been so worried about doing it. But uh, having uh, had experience of the last cab, it was, took me best part of the whole day to do one side. So shows how um, bad they can be. This one in particular is, is really good. So, and this ball joint's still all right too. It's nice and firm, no slop in it. So that's great. I'm gonna get these greased up, get them put on, and then we'll get it put back on the cab. And that is one side done. Lovely jubbly. as you would have seen from that bit of time lapse there me struggling to get that on because the new bushes are so tight compared to the old ones it, I had to stretch it over to get it over but it is on as you can see I've given the uh, top arm a little clean up as well with a bit of the old G101 that's salvage rebuild as well I've got that off of them too I think this is a plug for salvage rebuilds today Rob and Chris at salvage rebuilds thanks guys for uh, all your little tips and tricks anyway <laughs> That's a, that's a, that was a shameless shameless plug to try and get on their channel, I think, but there we go. Anyway, that side is now done, all tight. The ball joint's back on all tight, and it doesn't appear to have any play in it at all, so that is great news. So now, we've got to do it all again around the other side. <laughs> Let's carry on. Right, just to prove there's no play in it now, as you can see, I've got the wheel back on, and that is going nowhere. Lovely and, lovely and tight now before when I pushed 
had the wheel like that and pushed the back side of the wheel it moved and rocked but no that is solid so that should do the trick hopefully stop my knocking noise with any luck top banana right we are around the other side now Ooh, not the camera as you can see um, this side is nowhere near as bad but it is just starting to go you can see that the bushes are actually actually separating on the back it's like the same as the other side did so obviously we've got both sides so we might as well do them let's uh, get this ball joint undone the same as we did the other side now I'm going to do this side live just so you can see hopefully it coming out reasonably easy you know. there's a plan anyway an 18 mil nut on this ball joint which is a bit of a random size but everything on these cabs is agricultural is probably a good word it's all sort of really big stuff like the wheel nuts are like 27 mil so it's massive and there's six of them you think to yourself that's a bit overkill but obviously the amount of work they do and the amount of pounding they go through in London they need to be pretty beefy otherwise it'll just fall apart In there. Right, give that a clonk and hopefully that will pop out. Go, that's that out. Oh. Train over there. And these nuts on the back on this big long bolt are 24 mil. So this comes undone as easy as the lava side did. Yep, yeah, come on, it's come undone at least. Usually the nut is the easy bit, it's the uh, getting the bolt out is the harder bit. You'll see it's quite a long bolt, it does tend to tend to rot in there, but someone said that the other side didn't, so. That's obviously help. Um, if you try, try and rotate the whole bolt slightly as well, it will break any seals that he's got as far as sort of rusty seals in, inside. Now this, what we'll do, we'll undo that nut so it's just near the end of the thread, not too near the end, but just so you can get a little bit of movement on it and give it a clunk with a hammer on the nut so it doesn't damage the thread. And hopefully it should. moving so that's a good sign at least now that should be part of the bush and as you can see it isn't anymore so shows you that they need to be doing it's not ideal, but if you can give it a gentle tap on the end, try not to ruin your thread, get it through as far as you can, and then I tend to use an old extension bar or something like that to knock it from the other end then, and hopefully that will keep it going through. And once you've got enough room, then you can put the old extension in there and knock it through as well. Sometimes it helps if you get a, a lever bar in there and actually turn it, stick the socket on the end of that bolt, put some pressure on it while you're turning it, winds it out like that. So it does have a tendency to slip off a little bit because it's going around, but it gets you that little bit further. All helps. Get the bar in there now. Get a clonk. If you can get straight on it, it doesn't tend to move. Well, it's 
been in there for 100,000 miles. You don't want to move. So keep everything moving as far as the arm as well, because that will allow it to hopefully slip through. Sometimes, if there's a ridge in the bush, you can um, wind it out using the thread with, with the ridge, if that makes sense. I'm just going to go and grab something to tie this up with, because I don't like the way that's put on that brake hose. Let me, um, let me just put that back in there for a minute, and I'm going to go and get something to hold that up with, because that's going to pull that out, otherwise that's going to ruin it. Right, good old bungee cord. Tie this around it somehow or another. Go around now. Put that onto there. Put that onto there. And that'll stop the tension from being on that brake hose then. Otherwise, not really working, is it? too much stretch in the uh, bungee cord. I'm going to keep the pressure off that brake brake pipe, okay? There we go. That's that. The other thing that can fight this is because the bush is stuck on the end of that bolt, it's fighting against the hose on the side here, so I may have to try and uh, cut that bush so that it's loose on the nut, on the bolt rather. As you can see, it's rusted to the end of the bolt, and it shouldn't be. I actually had this on my old cab where they'd replaced the bushes and hadn't bothered getting these collars off, and there was about four lots of them on there. <laughs> So that obviously been total bodge up. It's the only thing when you go to a lot of these cab garages because they're churning them out so fast and they obviously people need their cabs on the road ASAP. They don't always take the ma massive amount of care that you would on your own car or on a classic car or anything like that. And obviously because I'm of that mentality where I try and do everything as best I can, when, when you get something done on the cab, not always up to par. There we go. It's one of those things, I guess. They are a work also at the end of the day, so you can't be too um, fussy with them. But at the same time, I want it to be right. So you can see that they're loose now, those collars, hopefully. There we go. That should allow that to stop fighting it now, and hopefully it will knock off a little bit easier. You can see it's actually bouncing on the bush inside, but it's stuck. Um, okay. Can't get that extension in yet because it's too long. with the old cab where it just didn't want to come out. It's loose in there, it's turning free enough so it should come out. Let's see, I'm gonna go and see what else I can find to put in the end of this end that's a bit shorter and we'll see if we can knock it through. I'll come back to you in a sec. Well this proves sometimes brute force and hitting things don't work. 
got a pair of grips on the end of it and wiggle it up and down and it's coming out slowly but surely so hopefully it's going to go all the way out like that looks like this bolt's in good condition as well come on that breath that shape need to get back on that mountain bike Sometimes moving the actual arm up and down like I just did then helps because if the bushes aren't completely round like they were on the other one, they can get bound up. So if you move it up and down, kind of freeze it up a little bit. And hopefully, as it's come out, and I know that's that far out, I might have to get my extension bar in there and knock it the rest of the way through, hopefully. Last You go just like that now I've got the extension bar back out <laughs> oh dear. solve one problem give yourself another because the extension bar is a bit smaller but only fractionally so it's still fairly tight in there now there we go it's coming out easy a bit of luck all right there you go should be the arm off there you go banana let's see what these bushes are like I'll come back to you in a second right these bushes are nowhere near as bad as the other ones but they still look like they're not that healthy yeah they're all breaking up inside see the rust that's all just completely snapped off and the other side's just falling out there you can see look once again egg shaped not round anymore which is why I had the issue where if I jack the cab, cab up to do any other work on it, the knocking would go away for a little while. And that is because it allowed this to move to a slightly different spot and a bit of the bush to rotate around to stop the clonking. Obviously, once it gets into a certain position and it wears its way through again, that is why you end up with the clonking again. So that explains that. Let's take this one off and have a look. all of them that one is still intact so that's the best one out of all of them it's still not great but it's, you can see in there that all the dust it's come out my hands are black but that's all the dust that's come out of the bush where the bush has just disintegrated give that a little tap it should just pop out he says <laughs> there it goes yeah, so that front one there was, the, or the back one I should say, was the best one out of all of them. Still not great, but the, definitely the best one out of all of them. So, I'm going to do the same thing with this uh, arm. Give these insides a little file up. We can see there's a ridge in there, but it's just got a bit of rust inside. We'll get the new ones on, put it all back together. And hopefully, should be jobs are good. Let's carry on. Right, after some struggling, same as the other side, that is in there. I now need to get the bolt put in. Um, get the old washers off of that, put a little bit of grease on it. Just so that it doesn't squeak, hopefully. That is the plan anyway, and it obviously will hopefully uh, stop the bushings from wearing so far, so a little bit of grease in there. And then it's just a case of trying to thread all this back through the way it came out which is sometimes easier said than done because 
the holes obviously don't always line up where they should do as far as obviously the orientation of the bush there we go it's going in when you need it on the other side well about the same actually now I did have to draw the bushes back in slightly when uh, I wound it in on the other side because they did obviously pop out like this one has but that's not too much of an issue uh, she's gone right through yes, I'm quite surprised about that a little tap to finish it off She's in. How about that? Right now we can actually um, get rid of this bungee cable and just hook the ball joint back in there for now so that it's holding the knuckle in the right place. So I'm got to worry about that being damaged. And we can put the, whoop, not the camera, put that bolt back in there after. In fact, I'll just put it on there finger tight so it doesn't slip off like it just did then. If I can find it, that is. Where's the bolt gone? Not going either. Lost a nut. Yeah, boy. Where's it gone? I can't see it. Probably sitting on it. <laughs> right, well, okay. We'll find that in a minute. Let's get this on here. So that is the washer that goes on there first, then the nut. So to do this job, it is literally one nut and one nut and bolt. Um, there's nothing else to take off apart from that, and obviously the bushings have to come out. Um, so yeah, it's not too much of a job, as long as you can get that bolt out the middle of there. That is the hardest bit. Um, I'm gonna find this other nut for this ball joint, so I can put that back on so I know it's not gonna fall out. And I'll get this wound up, and I'll come back to you in a minute. There we go, that is the arm bolted back up at the back, squeezed in the bushes nicely, ball joints bolted back up, found the nut for that in the end, it was hiding under a pot of grease I think it was, or the lid for the pot of grease. So all I've got to do now is put the uh, wheel back on and I'll show you um, when I get that back on that there's no play in it and then we have job done, top banana. Right, this is just to prove there's no play in it. I'm wiggling that wheel around and there's nothing in there at all now so that is really good so hopefully we should have nice solid front suspension again no more clonking lovely jubbly right then that is going to be it for this episode of mech tech that repair went really well i'm actually quite surprised because as i said on the video the last cab that i had i did that repair on it took forever this one was relatively easy so that is absolutely great and hopefully finally get rid of that clonking noise that I've had for a couple of months now so fingers crossed on that one so the cab could live to fight another day um, another repair complete a fairly quick job this one so that's uh, that's good if you do like what you see make sure you check me out on Instagram I've got mech underscore tech 1985 and I've got Facebook mech dash tech for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to and if you do like what you see maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down there and ring the little notification bell we're doing repairs on things like this the Westfield, the Freewheel Van, the Puma, hopefully in not too distant future the Capri is going to make a return to the channel as well because I know a few of you have been asking about that. So yeah, there's quite a different uh, variation of cars on here so if you do um, want to have a little look, make sure you look at my back catalogue, I've got about 50 videos on there now so it's uh, racking up the, uh, the count as they say. So all there's left for me to say is if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures I'll see you again next time. Cheers guys.